Hello everyone, welcome to The Drop Pod. This is a show that is fully behind Resident Evil and all it stands for. I am your host, Aegis. I also have Malastrum. I'm the guest, I'm Malastrum. He's also the guest, apparently, no? <laughs> Imagine if we've been recording, like, since, you know, episode one up until now. It's just been like one giant like <laughs> loop. We somehow have been hitting everything that has been happening in the future just on the mark. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, I predict that a lot of people are going to get rich next week. <laughs> <laughs> from stonks. <laughs> uh, before we begin, I just wanted to uh, send out my regards to the actress that had passed uh, from ah, Resident yeah. Evil Village. Uh, Jeanette Mouse, she died at age 39 after going through quite a battle with... Uh, yeah, yeah, she had a, a GoFundMe uh, battle with uh, cancer. She had a GoFundMe up initially to uh, get some... Uh, some type of equipment to help her out but uh as of right now her gofundme is to support her uh parents i believe apparently she's been a rock for capcom's development as of the past 10 or so years so it's kind of i didn't know that i thought uh she was just recently working on uh this uh, RE8 project um from what I read in fact here uh, we here at Capcom R&D 1 are deeply saddened to hear about the passing of Jeanette Mouse the talented actress who helped bring several different characters including our witches to the world in Resident Evil Village That okay well they just ended that quotation there there's more yeah. to that but That's about all I had seen, was just the quote. Um, this, this podcast is fairly recent to that event passing, so I will leave the GoFundMe uh, in the description if anybody wants to help out. Yeah. Um... I wanted to bring that up because, you know, later on, we're, I, I had plans on talking about the, the memes that have been going around on <laughs> villages, and but I, I just didn't want it in, in bad tidings or anything, so. Yeah, no, I'm glad uh, you brought that up. Aside from that, the game is is looking to be a pretty good one. All of the trailers have now come out to pasture i'm excited well, you haven't to see... seen you haven't seen any of the trailers right only the ones that mattered involving a a certain character of the big and tall variety okay so you did see the most recent one from the stream then i can neither confirm nor deny because I don't know what the stream trailer was. I just know what I what I saw was the, the ah. lady in motion. Okay. Uh, well, we had a small dis uh, discussion uh, <clears throat> uh, last week after the uh, end of the podcast. Uh, and I was telling him about the, uh, the Duke, who is the... Uh, like a returning merchant mechanic of sorts from uh, Resident Evil 4. Not the literal merchant, who is called the weapons dealer. It's confirmed in the RE4 PS2 uh, game guide booklet. He's the weapons dealer, if you didn't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm very much looking forward to uh, having somebody that you can just find at random and be like, oh shit, yeah, time to upgrade. So, uh, that means at least, at least I, I can see it, that the game will be, uh, it, it'll be a little lengthy 
and it'll have some uh, different environments as opposed to like uh, how uh, RE7 was, where you're kind of mostly just on the property of the house. I mean, granted, you're in a castle now, but it's like some of the stuff I've seen. Uh, I got, I got good feelings, good feelings moving forward. It ain't no cyberpunk. Big, big mommy milky titties. I think <laughs> that th this game, this upcoming game, will be hopefully a, a step in the right direction. It'll at least go the right side of the highway. Uh, I mean, uh, Cyberpunk uh, came out and everybody was like, oh yeah, this is going to be killer. And then we got it. And then most of us were like, oh, okay, yeah, this is going to need some work for sure. But I remember I was doing something illicit in the game. I forget what I did. Uh, I think I just fired a gun in like public, and that was about the extent of that. But I turned around, and there was just a cop behind me. There was no cops behind me <laughs> as I was doing the thing. But I turn around, and there's just a cop. I get in my car. I book it. And behind me, there are cop cars, and I'm just like, okay, that doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. So... This game is going to need some work on that end, but I go on Reddit and I'm just seeing flame post after flame post after flame post that this game is bad. The people should be burnt at the stake. But then on the, on the very large end of the spectrum, I'm seeing people go, am I the only one that's enjoying this game? <laughs> and I, I cannot, I cannot... <laughs> count to you the amount of posts that I've seen going, well, I'm having fun at least. Is anybody else having fun? It just didn't make any... At least somebody was. It, it just didn't make much sense. And then, like, the next day it was like, no, you are not the only one that's that's having fun. Enough. It's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... It, that, that community is in utter turmoil. It's, it's wild. Um, now... Have you gone back to play the game at all since, uh, I guess, the last time you stopped streaming it? Yeah, I have not played that game. I have not touched it. I'm waiting for Operation Save My Video Game to be full in full effect before Same I touch five it. five months. Exactly. Exactly. I'm waiting for the big <coughs> No Man's Sky re-release, re-push, re-zero of this game. Reverse. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, I think the, I think that mode's a little silly, but I feel like I'm gonna play it. Oh, the mode silly, you say? Oh, what tipped you off from that? Uh, the fact the that the comic I saw... book filter, or the fact that uh, all the characters have been smallened to fit the environment. The fact that I saw <laughs> five hunks in the same zone. <laughs> You can't be hunk. I'm already hunk. Fine, I'll be Jill. I'm already Jill. I'll be Leon. I'm already Leon. I saw like in the in a screenshot on Steam, it was either five Mr. X's or there were five Nemesis, and I was just uh, Nemesis. Hang on there. That's his name. You can't. You can't Nemesis. A, you can't put a goddamn plural on that. That is illogical and unreasonable. You just changed the name. Oh no. Tyrant tie. <laughs> no. But the game looks silly. I need them to stop doing this though. But I feel like I shouldn't play it. I mean it's gonna come with uh, a copy of RE eight exactly. for free. So. Exactly. Yeah. But I need I need more content in my RE eight. I need the story beats, like how we had in RE7. I liked Ethan Dies. I liked playing that mode. I liked going through a roguelite adventure after I beat the game. That was fun. If they don't do well, that, I mean, I'm going to be sad. Well, I mean, keep in mind that the uh, the team working on Reverse, uh, they aren't... They're, they're a completely different team oh, compared okay. to uh, uh, RE8's team. So that makes it good, does it? Yeah. In a way. I mean, they can still add on stuff like the main team, but yeah, that's like a side team thing. And it's just, it's it's a collaboration, I suppose. So they're just putting their stuff together. 
You hear that, collaborators? We can all get along. The mommy milkies and the hunkies on the other team. We can all play the game. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I wonder if they will include uh, mommy milkies. She is a lady. I will not have you disrespecting her name in my goddamn recording. Okay, you just said mommy milkies. I was referring to the other one. Which one? The other one. That's in the Which game. one? It was in the trailer. She was tall. Yeah, that's who I meant. I wonder if they will have mommy milkies in RE verse. You put some respect on her name. I can't even remember her name, so it's just Miss D. Lady which, Dimitrescu. Which doesn't make it all that much better. <laughs> the fact that I know the name. I have learned no, the name well. No, I have no, studied Miss it. D. Yeah, I bet you studied it. Studied some other stuff. You know. So, what is your... Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about a uh, possible theory uh, I have. I've been seeing uh, around that I think I agree with. Um, so, you've seen that little blurb. Uh, she opens the door and says, like, Finally, Ethan, we meet. Yep. It's me, Mega Mommy Milkies. And Ethan's like, Oh no, I've tripped and fallen. <laughs> I can't get up. And then anyway, she so she picks him up. Uh, and then she gets some claws out of her fucking fingernails and then stabs him. How do you think, or how do you feel about, uh, she might, I think, be like a tyrant of sorts? Wouldn't she be? That's what I think. Like, it's she's, if, if you take this, if you take her silhouette, aside from, you know, the uh, Mega Milkies, uh, then that with the claws, she basically has, like, the shape and the height. You have a shape and a height to yourself, fella. Yeah, five seven. Hell yeah! Hear that, ladies? You can get you one. Average height. Oh yeah. <laughs> Your man's got a beard. The the <laughs> my beard is the tallest thing about me. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I I it would make sense. Yeah. You give her all that power. I would imagine but, she's a tyrant. But as you know, no one woman ain't meant to have all that power. She's got plenty of it. Oh, mama. <laughs> and then um, the people online being like, well, y'all know she's going to like fucking mutate at the end and turn to like a big amorphous blob monster creature, right? Oh, yeah. Because, like, I mean, that, that's every Resident Evil game. That's always oh, oh, what yeah. happens. That's just the formula. It yeah. Burst. And then everybody's like, and? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We here at the Drop Pod only do this in jest. This is a bit. You guys need to stop simping out there, all of you. Yeah, tall tall woman ain't entirely my thing. Um, if she had abs, though, oh. <laughs> that changes everything. Oh yeah, love me a woman that can beat my ass in six different <laughs> six different forms of judo. <laughs> uh, I. I hearken back to um, Resident Evil 7 and people said that this wasn't going to work a Resident Evil game in like first person and I remember I'm like I never really had seen that I'm surprised Yeah, I, I'm surprised too it was always like oh this is different but this seems really interesting before the game had even came out people were like oh this is gonna fucking blow ass but this is something I've always wanted in Resident Evil since the 
the advent of four, and we got five, and we got what we know as Resident Evil 6, which has become a a sleeper hit to a lot of us, especially uh, if you play on PC, you have like, the support of mods, so it's the game's kind of fresh and new every so often. But that's all. That's what I always wanted. It's just like the game being a goddamn horror game for once. And when Resident Evil Seven came out, I was like, "Oh, this is sick!" Like it. This is yeah. how I kind of remember Resident Evil being. It's just different perspective now. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping for a lot out of Resident Evil Village. It's apparently, now- I can't say eight. Fuckers. Now, now, what do you think about uh, when they do RE9? Because uh, 8 is, at least how the uh, trailers are putting it out to be, is supposed to be like the end of Ethan's story after two games. Uh, do you think they'll go back to a more traditional third-person view, or do you think they'll keep trying to do the first-person So this is for interesting RE9? that you brought that up. I, I want to bring that back a little bit. I thought this was going to be the end of Chris's story. They're kind of painting it that way. But uh, no, they, I'm pretty sure, have explicitly said, at least in the trailers, that this is the end of Ethan's story. And you saw Ethan in the text? It was like a voice blur oh. thing or something, to, something akin to that. <laughs> You gotta be really careful. Because if I'm right. Oh. Hmm. Or maybe it just said end <laughs> of the story. Look at that. Look at that. But anyway. I just think. RE8 is already trash. Okay, YouTube. That's what you get okay. for looking it up. Now you done did it to yourself. Yeah, bad game. Hasn't even come out yet. Literally same as the last game, but more expanded. No, it's bad. It's so bad. Do you think Mercenaries this is gonna are going to be gonna the worst RE8? Game? Game. This is going to be the worst Resident Evil game ever. They should have never switched to the first person perspective. It's ruined the game. Mallow turned off his voice synthesizer. It's like, I'm sorry, how well did RE7 sell? Over a million? You're over a million yourself. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Much appreciated. This is the part of the show where I bring up to my guest... Ain't that right, Mel? Yeah, I wasn't in the first uh, pilot, episode zero. No, that was Arthur. Oh wait, no, wait, no, none of you, none, of, no, 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 no. Arthur's dead. Arthur's dead. The wipe is the, the, the wipe. The blood has been wiped off. Have you contacted his left ones and informed him of his passing? Yeah. See, he kind of just came in here. You assured me he that he was top quality. And then you Did murdered I? him. You did. I I I didn't murder him. It was my entrance. You burst it through his chest like alien. Yeah, but that's just the flow of life. Like I didn't murder him. That's just that's how that had to be. How did you get in him? That's the real question, isn't it? Eyes on the inside, my friend eyes on the inside we need more eyes we're thinking on the basis of planes grant us eyes grant us eyes oh! Oh! <laughs> you guys can't hear this I hope but on discord when Malo peaks oh yeah <laughs> just you just it just cuts uh, off <laughs> yeah oh 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 <laughs> this is part of the show where i ask mella 
what he's been doing. What have you been doing? Uh, uh I got heavily back into Bloodborne. Um, <laughs> been playing a lot of Bloodborne. Uh, doing some editing, making some monies. Um, I am now definitely at the point. Uh, I have decided on. When I am going to quit my job to pursue this, I just hope I can get in touch with people, you know, literally within, like, the next month and a half. Otherwise, I need to start annoying people again. Be like, hey, you didn't email me back yet, even though you said you were interested. What's up? Um, But it's looking like it's going to be March is when I'm going to... Uh, cut ties and leave my shitty custodian job. I know a fellow um, that would love to take your kneecaps. <laughs> we need more kneecaps. We're thinking on the basis of planes. <laughs> uh, I had forgotten, though, that uh, I had forgotten about my pension that I'm, I've am i been uh, putting into part of my paycheck. So... Uh, this isn't for all places, but for where I work, uh, after five years, you become vested. And that essentially means that uh, you can't touch that money. And uh, interest starts to go into uh, that. And that starts to build. So when you retire at uh, 59 and a half, yay, or 60, 65, um, then uh, you'll be able to touch that money again. Now, if you take out that pension money, which is what I'm going to do, uh, because I would rather use it now than put it into a pension retirement fund that I don't have yet and I don't care to currently do because I'm 23 and that's a little early for me. And even then, I can edit for the rest of my life so long as I'm not blind is how I see that. Now, uh, I've saved up over the past three years $1,900 uh, per year, which comes out to about, uh, I believe my dad said uh, 5400 because he helped me uh, calculate. Uh, plus, there's 4% interest on that as well, so that's uh, another few hundred dollars. Uh, now, whenever you take that money out, whenever you... Uh, quit there is it's uh at least from what I had seen looking up into it I need to actually you know when I decide that this is it and put in my two weeks I need to start contacting people and be like hey how can I get a hold of this money um it's heavily taxed and or uh there is a percentage penalty fee you have to pay uh, which it may be like 10%. So even with uh, some of the taxes and then the penalty fee, I'll still be walking away with a few grand, which that'll help me, you know, uh, keep from losing all my money, aside from uh, my dad's going to help me out here and there if I need it. Um, and then aside from that, I still need to reapply for my unemployment stuff uh, through PUA. And there's no reason I should get denied that now, since I was denied initially regular unemployment. This will be for the pandemic unemployment stuff now. Um, so yeah, I need to reapply for that, and I should be uh, sitting pretty well whenever I quit my job. Hopefully it won't take another seven months for them to reply. But uh, yeah, other than that, just been thinking about that kind of stuff. Um playing lots of Bloodborne, uh, made a new character, and uh, there was an article that Kotaku put out this week uh, that I would love to quote. Uh, quote, A cum dungeon offers the fastest XP farming in Bloodborne. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A cum dungeon offers the fastest XP farming in Bloodborne. So, in Bloodborne, there are optional uh, areas you can access that are randomized. They have different layouts. There's, like, over uh, 2,300 different combinations 
uh, and they have these codes that you can use. And so the one uh, the one code you can use for this layout, which is super broken, it, it was like a developer uh, code that uh, uh, over on Reddit, uh, our tomb prospectors had found. Um, essentially, you walk into the zone, you wait a minute, and then an NPC off in another part of the dungeon gets killed and he drops 83,000 uh, blood echoes, which is the currency in Bloodborne. I mean. So it's like you just rinse and repeat that. So the reason it's called Come Dungeon is because the the code or the glyph for the dungeon is C U M M M F P K. Come. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it, it's utterly amazing because that lets you build new builds so fucking quickly and Bloodborne if you didn't know Bloodborne has a system uh, that's different from the uh, Souls games where you know you have uh, every time you rest at a bonfire reload the area you get all your Estus back uh, Bloodborne uses consumables for its uh for its guns for bullets uh and for its blood vials for its healing so it's like if you run out of blood vials or uh silver bullets uh or quicksilver bullets um then you need to go farm for some more and i can't decide i've been playing bloodborne uh since like a year and a half after release until now and I can't decide if I hate that or I really don't mind. Because it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, what is it, finite uh, healing items and such. Yeah. But it's like, I, I don't know. I feel like it adds a sort of difficulty to it. I, I I honestly can't say. Again, I can't decide if I hate it or I just I don't care and it's okay. But it's definitely not good. But it's like with this now, uh, there's no issue for that. You just go to the cum dungeon and uh, get a bunch of blood cum <laughs> and trade that in for uh, vials of blood and uh, silver bullets made from blood. Ah, uh, yes. Too much silver in your blood. <laughs> it doesn't help that the uh, bullets, uh, they have like a liquid in the uh, uh, in the art for it. They have a bit of a, like liquid that kind of drips from them. Because like you take the bullets from your blood essentially to make, you know, bullets. Well, there's some like red in it and the bullets, they're like silvery white. So... It doesn't, you know, <laughs> doesn't provide a good image. <laughs> I, um, you guys can just put it on, like, PC just a little bit, maybe just, like, a tad bit. Like, you can do, like, the little, you know, like, the little Steam stream thing where I can just, like, stream my game to it. That would be cool, you know? Give us, I mean, uh, there's PS, there's PS now, but but I mean just something tangible that I can play on my little Chrome tab we have GeForce yeah, now exactly. on the Chrome tab now you can just hand that over you know give me a little just get a, P give me a, little just get a PS5 forehead forehead just got money yeah dummy what what you're not gonna have money by next week <laughs> are you do you guys not own money oh are you poor well if you're poor you should just invest in the stonks in the stonks and then the poor invested in the stonks and then the stonk people said no no what are you doing no that's my money it's not fair it's not right they're taking all my billions of dollars help no stop investing in the stonks poor people help these poor people they're taking all of my funds my 
multiple boats. I won't be able to afford them. They're cutting down my hedges. I can't take it. Oh, no, I can hardly pay the maid for her services. <laughs> Tell these poor people what they're doing is illegal. Shame. I have so to you... tell everybody sorry Mel, but I have to tell everybody it, we will discuss this later on in the show I have to tell you guys we cannot tell you what to do all we can do no. is just say alright this is what's happening though this is good but we cannot yeah we cannot tell you guys that yeah I would do this so should you cannot do that <laughs> but we'll get more into that later I just I like the whole how it started out so minute a guy that's been talking about this since last year and he's been putting everything into it and then here it goes here it mm -hmm. is this is what I said what would happen literally the, the 2012 guy but this actually happened this is tangible mm -hmm. anything else uh not on my end specifically you've been besides doing from future plans stuff have I? Oh yeah. Well, I got I got all my uh, PS2 games in the mail there finally. You go. So see, look, he lied. They're they're all sitting at home. He fucking lied. <sighs> what games you get? What about? Good. What games you get? Uh I thought I uh, mentioned that last uh, podcast. I got a uh, Godfather. Uh. My Medal of Honor Frontlines. Another timeless classic. Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Indeed. Uh, Black. Yes. And uh, Resident Evil Outbreak File 1. There it is. Uh, Shadow of Rome. Tell him again. Shadow of Rome. Pre-Christian yeah. era Rome. <laughs> yeah buddy and uh, a little before that I got uh, Onimusha Dawn of Dreams so I'm looking forward to streaming all this shit oh yeah oh yeah find them out there on that classic twitch.tv forward slash maelstrom mm -hmm. maelstrom mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm M A E L Strum. No, no, no. M A I L Strum. M M A L A S T R O M E. I'm not Maelstrom. I'm Malastrom. I'm the dyslexic version of Maelstrom. You're not Maelstrom. No. Get out. Yeah. Get out of here. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Malastrom. Get out. Mala. Like the prayer beads. I am so sorry, dear viewer. You won't bother us <laughs> any longer. <laughs> this. What about you? This... What, what, what are you? What have what you been doing? Andrew has done some Maelstrom. <laughs> Maelstorm. Hey, Malastorm. What's up? <laughs> I heard that a lot. Malastrome, welcome. Hey, you see, yeah, people do do it to your name. See? It's the E, or they think it's a, it's a storm. <laughs> Who's the real dyslexic here? Me? Or the people who call me Malastorm? Smash that subscribe button if you think it is Malastorm. Hit the like button. <laughs> if you like the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. What's up with you? Oh, you know. Same shit, different day. Mm-hmm. Yes, what you, sir. What you been up to? Oh, you know. Same shit, different day. Do you know what that's from? everything exactly 
Exactly. If you would have said anything else, I would have been very upset. Alrighty. I've been going back to my roots. The grassroots. Oh, yeah. I've been playing a lot more horror stuff recently. Getting back into my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I started the week off with a balanced breakfast. And then I downloaded video games and then I played them on stream. Well, what'd you play? What'd you eat? Uh, I don't eat breakfast. I don't think most of our generation eats breakfast, though. That's kind of the weird thing about it. I think. Yeah, just. Yeah. It's not Spends even. what job they have. It, I don't even think it's really the time. It's more or less just a lot of us kind of get the jig. It's like cereal's not that good for you unless it's something that's that's literally designed for heart health or cholesterol checking it's yeah yeah it's like you know frosted flakes they're not the best thing for you kiddo hate to break it for you but it's literally sugar mold <laughs> that you're eating it's not the best thing what's uh, your favorite cereal i feel like i mentioned this uh these days I okay, I want to hear it again. <laughs> no. These days I'm more of a frosted mini wheat type of guy. I like raisin bran and I also like cinnamon toast crunch. Those are all three of my faves. Yeah. Don't you add me? You you asked. I said I said yeah. Oh. <laughs> nah, eh, eh. Um yeah, I've been playing more horror i downloaded uh the medium which i said i was going to play last week uh it's a slow burner i don't it's hard for me to really show my emotion on these games well it's hard to show emotion at all because i'm just so hardcore <sighs> no i think that's uh hollowed you're hollowed out i'm so hardcore and manly and everybody just gets frightened of that what a man wow <sighs> you know it's hard men am i right fellas but i've been playing the medium it's it's a slow burner i haven't really seen too much of the scares to me it's like murdered soul suspect with like a little silent hill crossover it's you're you're kind of like a detective in a way you're meant to solve this mystery it's good so far. I like the mystery aspect of it, but to say that it's scary is just like, man, really? Are we mm -hmm. sure? Um, we played. There's no combat in it, is it? Technically, no. But the game says, like, you're not entirely defenseless. You have you have a little offensive tool as long as you have the energy to do it. You get to send out a a blast, because you are also an alternate version of you. And this alternate version nice. of you has some goddamn energy wielding the light. And you gotta show the darkness what light can do. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never heard that one before. Oh, no. That's for my destiny, boys. You know what? I think we're about to have a record. I have not talked or went on a rant about Destiny this week. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I think the game is good. I do recommend it. Uh, it's definitely a slow burner, so if you don't like slow plays and you're just like, oh, I need to get through this, man. I got places to be. This ain't going to be the game for you. But it's good to sit down and unwind to a nice little mystery type thing hmm. last night That's the good. boys and the hell jumpers we played labyrinth expect a video on that this week the game is it's a game all i can really say is michael got got uh zombies got got i did not get got no i think you got got i did Your not reaction said it all i did not get got Unfortunately, I uh, I found the game more funny than anything. It was just like 
you're going through the motion everything is like a, a scripted action like it's just set to occur you walk under the light post bam the light goes out uh oh <laughs> you, you cross a you cross a hallway uh oh there's a monster it's it's like you, every horror trope that you possibly know of like this game has it is <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's hilarious randomly doors are closing behind you it's like oh yeah could have told you that but it's it's okay it's an okay experience you chuck ten dollars at it you get to play with your friends it's an okay experience why don't you why don't you tell them how it ends oh i can't do that i can't do that mm. i can't do that otherwise i i would literally waste the ten dollar experience you know how new the game is they can also show me some money <laughs> have me sponsor sponsor ages tell him to play this game he'll do it dude <laughs> you already did he will no put he which bounty for you he will play it again dude he will hell i will gift copies just tell him pay me the um the experience is fun there's a lot of games that we have had uh where the experience is co-op but these are few and far between people like it's only the most recent year where we started seeing a bunch of games that are just like co-op horror experiences we had phasmophobia in silence labyrinth um i i can't even think of a game that came out before then that was like co-op centric that was horror unless we're about to yeah. go so far back then we got cry of fear and it's like that that's has... i mean no there there had to be something a little bit prior to phasmophobia then but like nothing nothing that was like majorly on the radar but there had to have been something all i'm saying is among us <laughs> fuck off <laughs> it's scary you never know we had a game called alien swarm that came out uh no actually wait a minute i think alien swarm came out before cry of fear so that don't work <laughs> dying light is technically a horror but that kind of gets a little bit silly at the end when you have your build ready to go and you're just flying across rooftops at mach 20 well, Dead that's bite. also different because that's that's not an independent studio. We're clearly talking about independent studios here. Oh, I am not. I'm talking about recent co-op experiences that are horror centrics. That's what which I'm talking tend to about. Be in de which tend to be made by independent studios. But that's that's not the that's not the precipice. the the whole The whole claim is that in recent time we don't have too many of these experiences. I can tell you ten. FPS games that have come out in recent years. I cannot tell you 10 co-op horror games that are recent to last year. I could tell you as well. Then lay it on me. Most all of them were indie ones. <laughs> or you didn't hear about them. Then lay them on. Oh, I just meant I could tell you about uh, the first person shooters that came out. Oh. Well, anyway, we had Dead by Daylight that took Twitch by storm. It's still really good. They have a ranked mode that came out in 2016. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people play ranked, though. I couldn't tell you. I don't play it. The Forest, which came out of Early Access, I can't, don't quote me, but that game had been in Early Access since I have been born, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um... GTFO, which finally has a matchmaking system uh, made by some of the boys that were working on Payday 2. They decided to jump ship and they decided to go whole hog on a co-op FPS experience. The game is good, so if, you, if you've been like me, you didn't want to go through their Discord to find some people to play with, they finally have a matchmaker. So if you're thinking about doing gtfo because I've, I've met a lot of people that were in my boat it's like man i just don't feel like going through their discord i feel it the game has matchmaker now as of uh 2019 so or sorry 2020 so get you in there it's in a pretty good state 
Uh, we all yeah, I, yeah, I heard about that, and then like it kind of just I didn't really hear much more about it. Uh, uh, it's gonna be extremely niche. The game is entirely unforgiving. It is not new player friendly, so it's just you you take it how you can get it. So the people that are playing, they're they're a very tight knit community. They will actually latch on to people that join. It's like, hey man, don't quit this game. But this is a player base that will tell you, no, you don't do this because that's a bad that's a bad mode of play. No, you got to do this, this, and this if you want to play good. And that's not really fun for a new player. So, right. It, I the community is very nice. It's a lot different from Payday 2's community, where if you they see a new guy, they're just like, "Oh, that's a noob! I can't believe he's going in with a suit build. Oh my god! Stop!" Um, the Blackout Club came out in 2018. Haven't heard about that game after the fact. Uh, it's apparently supposed to be really good. I've never played it. I don't know about it. I don't care about it. Uh, Seven Days to Die. Couldn't tell you when that came out. I think it's out of early access now. <laughs> it's, it's another one of those I games I... that's been out in early access since I've been born. I don't know. Uh, Pacify as well. Pacify was a co-op experience. Can't really say too much about it. A game that Steven and I have played, Hunt Showdown. Little horror FPS battle royale. Yeah, I uh that that looked fun from what I had seen of uh, some people play it. Not too many players though. It's that's kind of the thing that's killing it. It's that the game is it's fun. It's just they they made some bad moves early. And those bad moves early are showing now. The game is fun if you just let it be fun though. Hmm. Uh, another game that Steven and I went hard into Deceit which is uh, it's it's Among Us basically but on the Cry Engine the game looks good the only thing that was barring that game from success is the fact that Discord exists uh, you can tell that people are or I mean I guess it's more akin to Friday the 13th but you're trying to find the guy that's like the killer you're trying to stay away from him Right. Deceit it's good until you get into a public lobby you see that this public lobby they're all they're, so some folks are in a discord of their own and they're just calling things out like oh i'm here i'm doing this and the killer is just like going ham so it's it's an unfortunate experience but it's one that we have uh and i mean those you know the, the whole point of that was that these games are so far uh so far down the line as opposed to like a first person shooter we've had so many just go back to back to back to back these experiences are pretty few so when we see them we gotta hope for the best um i think phasmophobia is gonna be super good if if we can get that developer to just get, get a guy get a friend have them. Yeah, just hire just even one person. Exactly. Get a friend. To get some more stuff out. Get some more stuff out. Because you can't sit there and go, you know, for three months, we're going to have this map come out. It's going to be dope. And then sit there for another three months. I, I know some fellows on my friends list that love the game to death. A lot of us do, especially yes. in the Hell Jumpers. A lot, of, a lot of us love this game. But I can't play it because I don't want my batteries to already go out on it just because of one map and then just go oh well I'll see you next year hopefully yeah. we have like three more maps or something that's not gonna do hire a guy get a good map development person do some stuff on the back end and that's all you gotta worry about even if it's just one dude it's gonna do you a lot better what else do you think could be add added to the game realistically more ghost hunting devices there are a lot of it, there's a lot of paranormal uh, investigative shows there's a lot of independent uh ghost hunters out there they they make their own equipment i i guess you could just get really creative with some stuff add some new ghost hunting tech have like a i'm, I'm sure i'm sure they didn't add all of the ghosts they possibly could i feel like there's probably some more like variants I, they I, could add. I always thought about that but then i'm just like what, what other ghosts are there out there i think he got like all of the main ones it's just like i'm there, there has to be more. Because I, 
I've searched up, you know, types of ghosts because I just wanted to see, like, how many ghosts are there? Like, I, I just couldn't find anything. It was, it was bizarre. And some of the ghosts that he has in the game are just, like, general terms for a ghost, like spirit. The fuck is that? It's just, that's a ghost. So it's... Yeah. It, it, he's digging deep. Or they're digging deep, sorry. They're digging deep. I don't want to assume anything unless this developer is like sure. a big and tall I'm pretty sure it's a guy a vampire lady <laughs> that could be a duchess of a manner of sorts mommy milky one sucky oh boy oh boy I was gonna read off uh <laughs> I was gonna read off the uh the copy paste but uh all I found one well, I found one, and I was just like, no. I, uh, going back to Phasma, though, I don't... I, I don't know what else he could really do with that. It, it's just, like, add more maps. Add game modes, that would be fun. Definitely a multiplayer mode. That would be fucking killer. The ghost, whoever the guy is, can only interact in such a... in such a way that the ghost would actually interact. Like, okay, if the ghost can throw objects, this ghost can throw objects. Or the player can throw objects. If the ghost can leave fingerprints, the player can leave fingerprints. You would have to figure out a way to make that seamless. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like... Well, I'm not, I'm not a great idea man, but, like, just from the concept of, oh, yeah, you could be the ghost, it... I don't know, I feel like that would, like, ruin the game in a sense... It's because it's like it's 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 about the ghost being unpredictable, but I I, I don't know. I feel like it it just wouldn't work as well if uh, you could be the ghost. I feel like in the sense of what we have and what we know now, it wouldn't really work. But you don't have to have it as like a main feature, and that's not the game's main feature. The main feature is that you are a ghost hunter. You're doing ghost hunting activity with a group of your folks it doesn't it doesn't bode well especially if the ghost was like afk like most of the time and you're, you're he's just like sitting there waiting for the other players to do stuff i'm sure that's not fun for the ghost or the players so it's uh it, that's why i said it, it would be cool to find a way to make that seamless force the ghost to interact and do certain things or force the ghost to mm -hmm. complete certain objectives of their own um, well, here's here's the thing. You say that that's not you know the multiplayer thing would have been the main feature, but like uh, take Fortnite for example, it's like the main thing was the uh, survival mode, and then that turned into the uh, battle royale, and now that's literally all Fortnite is that is the uh, battle royale, um, because they stopped uh, updating the survival stuff, uh, so it's like. It's not out of the realm of possibility that the multiplayer ghost bit could become the main part of the game. So here's the part where I played Devil's Advocate. The battle royale was free, meaning yeah. that a lot more people could get access to it. A lot more people could share their opinions and ideas. Sure. I feel like if the battle royale was just lumbered in with the base game and people were just playing both of them simultaneously i feel like we would be in a different position today um yeah with phasmophobia this is already kind of set in stone we both agree that it wouldn't do well the if if multiplayer is in the game it wouldn't do well i just want it because that's what the developers said that they were going to do and i just want to see how that would entail i've already played the game in vr i think it's kind of cool definitely need some refinement We've already beaten the game to death with the limited map pool that we have. I think just some game modes would breathe some life into it. What game mode could you possibly add? Multiplayer, because, I mean, that's that was already on your radar. And it's already lumped into the game. It's not like he's going to make a separate client say, oh, yeah, this is going to be free to play. Well, yeah, definitely. Hell, yeah, let's go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that blows up, and that's better than Phasmophobia ever was. It's it. That wouldn't That wouldn't be the case. Um, it it would be cool to see, nonetheless, if if he does end up doing this. If it don't work, it don't work. It'll sink if it sinks. But it would be cool because that's what he said he was gonna do, 
and I just want to see how that would be as already as a VR experience, how that would even interact with what the base game already is. So that's my right. that's my take. I it doesn't have to happen immediately and I hope it doesn't. I hope that doesn't come out till next year. Fuck it. But what I need right now is for him to at least hire a friend. Just tell him, hey man, I just need you to do some mapping. That's all. If you can do that for me and I can just at, yeah. at least look at it. I'll push it out in updates. We can do that. Just make sure the maps are spooky and that's it. Like some good shit yeah. would be like a hotel. Like I would love a hotel that you can just absolutely scaling yeah. up the entire hotel and you're having your friends just like, oh, this is scary. Down here on the first floor, you better come your ass down. Um I feel like I feel like that might also make it uh kind of just well, I mean, it would be a large map, and the difficulty with the large maps is it's like a hard difficulty, aside from, you know, the ghost difficulty. Um, but, like, I I feel like the game could use some more, like, small media maps, because, like, the most recent one we got, I think, was uh, the prison. Or the uh, Asane Asylum. It was prison, yeah. Yeah, prison, uh, which I've yet to play, but... Uh, yeah, I think we could use some, like, more smaller maps like small to medium maps that aren't just like uh a uh house on the block or like the farmhouse i think the game could do with a also like a speed adjustment in general um the last large map that i got to play in this game was the uh the asylum mm -hmm. that was the largest map at the time it took so yep. long to set shit up if you had people that didn't really know what they were doing and you were just lugging them around. They didn't know where to where to go. They were always constantly lost. You would tell them to look at the map. They didn't know how to read that shit. Well, that's why the game locks you out of doing those uh, larger maps until you at least have some levels in you. Yes, but if I'm inviting some friends, they're, they're just joining me to join me. I already have this shit set up. This is what we're doing. I take you through rains for instance uh -huh. didn't know left from right in that in that asylum i i feel like it could just do with a little bit of a speed adjustment because it takes so long to set up anything come back to the truck go back and walk at a brisk pace to just speed adjust speed adjustment just being general walk speed adjust the sprint speed because the sprint speed is no faster than the walking when you really consider uh in the grand scheme of things i i don't know i don't know but it, i don't know how, it, but it's but it's like you're not you know if the sprint is too fast then like uh for some of the smaller houses then it's just like oh no i'm at the back of the house and now i'm already out of the house and the hunt just happened I know the door closes, but you get my point. Then there um, would have to be other adjustments, but we can't have it be this slow, especially on the larger maps, because you can't, it's not feasible. Otherwise, you need to maybe, either adjust the player count of these maps or make them, you got to make a speed adjustment because it, it just doesn't work right now. Lo lobby of 16 ghost hunters. <laughs> well, we had that modder for like a while that, that passed on the... The mods of the rest of the community did that allowed you to have like a, a really big lobby and it was kind of weird to see just you know 10 or so players load into a house but hmm. we need something like that if you're gonna add these like really massive places i don't think four people are gonna cut it for like a, a place like prison where yeah you, you have to have the setup time especially if it's on hard or professional where you just have like no time to set up and you're you're still fucking around trying to put a camera you know faced in the direction somebody calls out Oh, okay, I see the ghost on the left wing of the prison. All right, time to get this useless camera out of here and put it somewhere in the left wing now. It's just... It's crazy. It's wild. What if... Uh, what if he tweaked the run speed per map? I feel like is the only way that you could adjust the speed without there being a terrible issue... So, like, for the larger maps, you know, you're able to sprint a little bit faster, but, like, for the smaller house maps, like, you are at the same sprint speed as you were originally. I suppose, but even then, it's still just, like, the setup time of a lot of this equipment. Um, it, 
you know, like the, the speed meta right now, it's like you, you take all the equipment out of the truck, you place it at the start of the door before you even enter the yeah. home. That's if you're a solo player. So there, there just needs to, I think there needs to be a way that you kind of help, you know, solo play out a little bit there in terms of the speed. I, I like where that's going, but it's just the overall I mean, the setup time. It's just like that, that needs to kind of get to it, especially if it's on professional or something, there just needs to be something. Even if you could like use your points to buy like a setup place, like you, you can click on the map, the map will set up a camera right there before you even load into the zone. Like that would kind of be neat. Eh. Like pay. I, I don't know. That would like that would, pay, that would... like a blueprint. You used. Your... I don't know. I mean, I I think you're trying to uh, at least imagine the game to be faster paced when kind of the point of the game is kind of be to be you know slow and methodical. Like you watch uh, the ghost shows, you know you specifically, not the royal you, definitely you, Armand. You watch ghost shows. Yes, and that's why um... I said before they even get into an investigation, <laughs> they have their shit set up. So it, it it would make sense to me that you allow the cameras or at least something he, use your points to at least place the camera before you load. You, you know, he, here's a different idea. What if, like Payday, instead, uh, you still have you know your night, you know your night based uh investigations, but you had like a two parter. So like you come in during the day, and you maybe take some readings. You possibly set up some cameras, uh. And, like, maybe you can get some, like, inkling as to what the ghost may be, but never any definitive proof until the next part of that night in which you would go back. It's then nighttime, and then you try to figure out what the ghost is, and you have, you know, some of your stuff set up. Or, like, you can only set it up for, like, a couple limited pieces. Just so it's, like, it's not all pre-set up, and then you go in... And it's just like, okay, let's speed run this ghost in five minutes, guys. I see <laughs> some ectoplasm on the boy's computer. I believe the ghost is inside <laughs> the bedroom of the child. <laughs> A lot of socks stuck to the wall. <laughs> I got the UV light here. I can definitely see the ectoplasm building up in this room. <laughs> huh. huh. And it's there's a trail leading into the parents' bedroom. My God. It's all over where the mom sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want it to be speed run. It's already easy enough to speed run a map, by the way, especially if you're on professional. I think the whole point of professional is that you, you play it so that you can get in, get out, go to the Winchester, and wait for all of this to blow over. Hmm. But I'm just saying that it would at least be cool if you could set up the cameras prior to joining the lobby or something because it's it's kind of crazy how you, you have like just a place it, they don't even have to be set up just have like them on the tripod in the living room of like let's say like the very starter house they're in the living room that's not really going to affect or break the bank have them facing outward where they don't even matter then we can set them up at least they're in the fucking joint so that way a solo player doesn't have to sit there and go oh okay well, let me go back out oh I was into this, but now I gotta go back to the truck. I gotta get another camera because this camera over here, it has to stay there so I know what's going on. I, I don't know. I just, I, I wouldn't want it that way. I, don't, I, I, I like, don't I like how the it. game goes. I like how the game goes with, you know, uh, you have to bring everything in and, you know. It can still be that way though, Mel. Okay, okay. Imagine if instead you had to take everything out and bring it back to the truck. Be lucky that you don't have to do that. Like you lose out on money if you leave all your equipment inside the house. I feel like it was like that at, at first, and then everybody was like, "Yeah, can we don't?" <laughs> I I wouldn't know. I uh, hopped into it uh, a little, uh, like a couple weeks after it had started. But I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think it's gonna really break it in any feasible capacity especially if you are a solo player i don't you're still playing it methodical you're still trying to to plot out where you need to go to hunt it it's not like the camera just having it out immediately it's not turned on mind you it's just there where you, yeah. where you break place it, it break it break it no but make it more streamlined yeah and that's not always you know good like uh uh, for example with uh monster hunter uh rise the uh, new one that's coming out for the switch uh they recently decided that uh, 
for the one cold zone in the game. There usually is a uh, cold zone and like a hot zone and you have to bring respective drinks. Otherwise, uh, like the cold zone will sap all your stamina and the hot, like fiery zone will uh, it'll uh, chip away at your health. So you have to bring respectively a cool drink for the fire area and a hot drink for the cold area. Well, they're doing away with the hot drinks and I guess the cool drinks uh, subsequently uh, for Rise. And I feel like it it doesn't, you know, add much to the game, but it's like it, it's kind of just like part of the setup. You know, it's what you have to do. It's like this is your supply. You need to bring it. Otherwise, if you're not fully prepared, then you're going to have to try to uh, scavenge around in the area to find some uh, like fire herbs or what have you uh, or peppers, hot peppers. And then uh, you can make a hot drink that way or like some uh, some mushrooms and you can make those into a cool drink. My like it just makes drink. it feel I, too easy. I thought you meant like hot chocolate on like a cold winter night. I didn't know you meant bring a fucking Chilean ghost pit cup. <laughs> Chilean ghost pepper <laughs> into a drink, crush that up, and then you're good to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other one is a, uh, a chill shroom. It's a chili mushroom. I don't mean no goddamn sense. At least that's, sense. How, that's how it was in World, anyway. I'm thinking, oh, oh okay, that sounds a bit nice. A little warm tea. <laughs> when you're in a nice little place, warm you up a little bit. No, if you fucking put a cayenne pepper, you grind that up, put it into your water. <laughs> It's just called hot pepper, but it's hot enough to keep your entire body warm. But it's like, boo! Uh, again, it, it it just makes it feel just too streamlined. Boo! Moving off of phasmophobia, the forest was a game I've been playing. I like the forest. I have to admit this i i got it by other means when i was a kid when this game was in i guess alpha because it definitely wasn't goddamn early access apparently um that was a long ass time ago and i it's still in early access let's find out shall we the forest is currently 20 bones on on steam at this time it is out of early access it has vr support the game is out the release date was april 30th 2018 2018 i feel like it was maybe like four years or so so like 2014 who knows maybe you it's do like in when the you comments. started to hear about it i mean you let us know in yeah. the comments how long has the forest been at? But I like it, man. It's I yeah, it seems fun. I remember I showed my dad uh, this game, and then there was another survival game by the name of uh, Raft, and he really liked that one. He likes just mm. he he likes looking at those games. I don't think he would ever bring himself to like play like a survival game, but he always likes these style of games because he, he's like he figures himself as like a wilderness type of guy. Like, oh yeah, I could survive pretty well here. So I, I show him these games. And he's like, oh, that's cool. Can you fucking punch the shark in its face? And I'm like, no, you can't. Um, but yeah, uh, since it's been out of early access from the time I played it up to now, like it, it looks a lot different. Um, a lot of the systems look really fun. Like the whole just building things that are on the ground. You're not, it's not like Minecraft. You put up the thing, you attach a stick to another stick and now you got a sword. It's... You got you got to find a stick. You got to find you got to find some electrical tape, or you got to find some cloth. You got to attach that to the stick. <laughs> then you got a sword. But uh, game is fun. It's pretty spooky when you when you're just building some shit and you hear some like screeching in the back of you, and then you turn around and it's like, oh, that's peculiar. It's a naked man just standing right there. Wonder what he wants, and then he just starts attacking you for no reason. So now you have to arm yourself. So that you can defend your little your little hut. And if you're playing with the group, now you gotta you gotta arm yourselves to defend against the rising naked people that come after you. Yeah. Uh 
the caves are neat the caves are really neat it's really fun cave diving uh finding like the loot that's inside like i found a katana last night that was cool man and then i immediately got clapped because i thought it did like 10 trillion damage and it don't it don't do that sort of damage but it was cool it was a katana for two yeah, whole I minutes that. i had <laughs> i i had operated some nippon steel um I'll be playing more of it on stream. I learned how to use the bow last night. It was cool. Uh, there's a lot of minute little details that you have to kind of pick up on. Like I, last night I figured out from chat that you can put a trap in the water to get the fish. And I was like, oh, okay. Because it doesn't explicitly say fish trap, but you can put it in the water. Yeah. <laughs> just a bear trap <laughs> <laughs> I caught it it's cut in half I caught it <laughs> <laughs> it's a little rabbit trap used for like, like small game but you can put it in the water oh, okay. to get the fish and I was like oh okay it just didn't explicitly say that it was like it, you could do that so there, there's some things that I feel like could be a little bit but I, it's cool it's cool how that is because it's like okay I, I wouldn't have figured that out otherwise I'm glad that this person just kind of knows Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely no Minecraft because no. Minecraft ain't spooky unless you download a map or a texture pack and then your chat gets mad at you because you use a texture pack that has like too much going on but you like it because it's spooky <laughs> uh, we also played uh, Golden Light last night as a duo it was fun Yes, it was, uh, <laughs> I've seen some stuff about the game, uh, and it just recently got a co-op. It's a, uh, what, what is it, uh, roguelike or roguelite? This one's a roguelite. Ah, yeah, a roguelite, uh, dungeon crawler sort of game. Uh, it's first person, and there's a lot of meat, and it's, uh, I heard somebody describe it sort of akin to, like, a uh, horror prop hunt. But, like, the enemies are, you know, the props, and then they turn into enemies. Uh, and you're just trying to find keys to get to uh, the next floor. Again, another throughout the environment. co-op horror experience. You gotta latch on to this one, folks. I ain't got too many of them. It's pretty fun. It was pretty fucking fun. And uh, I, I was remarking, uh, I like how the game... When you're playing in co-op or even just like solo, like streaming it, um, it makes you sound like a fucking insane man. Like, oh, Armin, oh, I just found fat lips. Dude, what'd you get? I got the meat cheese. Ah, oh, nice. Dude, I got a, I got a pipe. It's called, uh, Crushy Murder Fire. Oh, sick, dude. I found the goddamn map. His name is Mighty Chomper. Nice. Hey, what's that up ahead? Is is that is that a fat man? Oh, let's walk through the fat man. Hell yeah. Big fatty <laughs> up ahead. Walk through him. He's a friend. Ah, oh, dude, is that a jukebox? Ah, oh, dude, give the jukebox some gold. Oh my god, is that fucking hugs? Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> is that the crow? <laughs> Dude, he could repair my my murder fire club. Game good. Game yep. fun. Bug. <laughs> Neat squash, but game good. Me hey, like of monkey, Mr. Pink. Good dev. Speaking of, speaking of monkey, um, uh, it just just requires one answer. Uh, no. Godzilla versus uh. King Kong. Which one? Mothra. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but like between the two. And only the two. Mothra? No, only the two. Between Mothra and Godzilla? No, between uh, Kong and Godzilla. What are the choices? Godzilla. And Mothra? And Kong. And, and No, and Kong. Mothra never fought Godzilla, to my knowledge. 
I thought you were asking me between Mothra and Godzilla, so what does that matter? No, between Godzilla and Kong. Mothra? No. Monkey and Godzilla. Oh, Moth. So, Mothra. Uh, I think Godzilla will still, like, whip ass because, what was it, like, the, the 19, the 1962 version of, like, the original, <laughs> the original, original Godzilla <laughs> said that, like, Godzilla whooped King Kong's ass. So it's like, I feel like it's I mean, he's... Batman versus Superman. It's like, Batman's always going to win this fight. I don't care how many powers he has at his disposal. It's fucking Batman. <laughs> well, I mean, Godzilla is literally king of the monsters. He's always been king of the monsters. Like, I don't care if Monkey has a backflip. Godzilla is king of the monsters. I will be... I will be rooting for Kong because I've always liked King Kong, but I feel like Godzilla just kind of has this one, you know? It's like, it, it doesn't... That's going to be interesting. It's an interesting little idea. I mean, King Kong... Or, sorry. Godzilla <laughs> has fucking electric fire breath. King, Co King God. King God. <laughs> what does King God have? He's a monkey. He's a big monkey. <laughs> <laughs> he does a backflip. <laughs> it's yeah. like, why is there a debate? Godzilla is king of the monsters. Uh, full disclosure, though, I have not seen many uh, monster movies. Uh, I, I just, I kind of like hearing about them sometimes. But like this recent stuff, like Michael uh, was posting about in uh, the Helljumper Discord. It was like, ah, oh, dude, at everyone. I gotta know, after the recent trailer, who would win? I didn't even see the recent trailer. It still stands. Godzilla is king of the monsters. That's kind of the end of the discussion. Yeah, but Mothra, though. Listen, I love Mothra, but it's I don't not think about you Mothra. do. I love Mothra! He does. Do you even know the Mothra song? Do you even know what Mothra is? Yeah. Who is Mothra? A moth, a moth who came from an island. Ooh. Some tiny, some tiny fairies sung to bring Mothra alive, or sorry, back. And who could forget baby Mothra before Mothra was Mothra? No chibi Mothra. Yeah, and and then the the Mothra babies. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I forget the name of that movie, but it was the one with uh, Mechagodzilla. I fucking loved that movie. The theme for that movie was amazing, too. You're an amazing theme for a movie yourself, bud. Great. You're welcome, friend. I've also been playing a lot more Path of Exile. I have just gone in. Don't even know what Destiny 2 is. <laughs> come back no please <laughs> not the destiny but come back we got 11 hours of path of exile no we got uh we got one more patch note or we got sorry we have the the pre-patch preview that was a weird way of saying that fuck off we have the patch preview coming up for destiny 2 this thursday when this podcast releases so we are hoping that some huge huge changes are coming and then after this week the new expansion or not the new expansion but the new season launches new content oh boy here we go again oh boy and then i'll have some stuff to complain about surely in the weeks to follow but right now this is a calm <laughs> before the storm path of exile never become a destiny uh competitor i can't believe it they're just letting it fucking slide that's it that's why destiny's so much better i'm going back to destiny rinse and repeat <laughs> uh i'm i'm more worried about with path of exile that i have not heard hide nor hair of path of exile 2 after they had announced it <laughs> like we had some gameplay footage of the game and everybody was like they... oh wow here we go 
and then I haven't heard Nathan about it since then. Do they really need a sequel? Like Overwatch needed a sequel? Well, you're talking about... I, I think right now the current Path of Exile, I'm not going to explain the lore because it, it would take me a, a, another podcast, like a solo podcast where I just start yapping about you, the lore. You did a thing. You did a thing. You were exiled. And then you got put on island. And if you win, then you get come back. Not quite. I like where your head is at, but not quite. I mean, I I played the game for one minute. You. That's not. You're not. That's not even hyperbole. You're not. I started the game, and then I I started on the beach, and then I was like, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep actually. And I never went back. <laughs> You're not entirely off the mark. Your character, whomever you chose, did something. They did a thing. Now you got exiled to Rayclass to where you have to survive and live off the land and try to kill your kill your masters. And you get super powerful and you start becoming a god slayer. So I was going to say that I feel like right now the story is kind of up its own ass in terms of that your character has become so powerful that they are killing the the shaper of all things and all things that are thus. It is, it's it's not a good mo. Um, so it, it's going to be cool to see how Path of Exile Two just kind of brings things back to all right. This is kind of scary. We don't have too many supplies. I need to get strong, big beef and try the to hero. there you go and then you become the hero and then you kill god uh this is something steven and i have talked about since its uh, announcement because the announcement of path of exile 2 came immediately after the huge huge fire of like blizzard during uh last year or not last year but the the year prior and it was it was just everybody hailing bullets on him. It was crazy. It's like, oh, you're bad, you're bad, and you're bad. And then here, guys, here's Diablo 4. And then everybody was like, oh, okay. I mean, all right. But you're bad. And then uh, Grinding Gear Games, the creator of Path of Exile, was like, oh, uh, here's Path of Exile 2. We've had it in this little test tube all along. Why don't you watch the gameplay trailer that we have of it right now? Here you go. And... Uh, after that, I haven't heard nothing. Same thing with Diablo 4. I'm worried about both of these games. I understand Corona was a was a terrible, terrible, terrible mistress, but we all know about her. What about this game that you're working on? Because I don't know about that. So we'll see what happens. Because Path or sorry, Diablo 4 is scheduled to release by the end of this year. That was the original plan, but people are thinking, is that out of the question because of all of this? But they haven't said anything explicitly, and what worries me the most is that you can't, you can't pre-order the game. So it's like maybe, maybe they're setting it to like next year or something. It's probably gonna, yeah, it's probably gonna get delayed. Path of Exile Two, on the other hand, worries me because it's a free-to-play game, so it's not like you can see the the pre-order to see when the game is going to release or anything. It's like, no, this yeah. is, this is we have to hear something about this game to understand that it's if it's in development hell, then so be it. But you got to tell us something. Um, it, but you know that's that's what it is. These are my games and their trials and tribulations, tri- tribulation tribulations even. Um, that is about the extent of my week a lot of horror stuff a lot of good horror stuff a lot of ARPG playing I've been grinding I've been on that grind and ain't nobody gonna stop me until Destiny 2 goes better but that's not in the cards How about them Knicks? <sighs> I know, man. See that spread? What? It's crazy. Let's let's get to the news portion of this. Uh, the news portion of the of, of this, the Knicks of the of this week's of this uh, week's game podcast. No, of this week's podcast. So tomorrow they're gonna play against the Clippers. Um, you guys won't know about this. So technically, yesterday, for you guys. 
But for us, they're going to play against the Clippers tomorrow. This is going to be a very interesting game because LA hasn't been doing too good recently. But the Knicks, though, right now, under Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau's coaching prowess, they should do something here. They should, they should have an idea. What do you think, Mel? How about that Super Bowl coming up? Um, who do you got? I don't care for either team. I forget who's playing uh, Atlanta and somebody else I don't care for. I don't sport. Well, you are super wrong. Uh, <laughs> did you say Atlanta? No. No? No. <laughs> I definitely... <laughs> Why do you gotta make fun of me when I don't I, even fucking care? Asking, that ain't fair. I'm asking you. I'm asking you're laughing at me. Because you he, didn't the man know doesn't you know said. the sport. And you he's laughing know at what me. You, said. <laughs> you bought into it. Like, hey, man. <laughs> how, about, how about the Super Bowl? Oh, I don't give a fuck. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You can talk to me about the Knicks like I know about the Knicks going on. I'm asking you. What do you What do you think? We got a We got it a brilliant game tomorrow. It's gonna be dope. I think I don't fucking care about the goddamn Knicks. We at the Drop Pod. Love. This is a gamer podcast. We love sports. No. EA. Half half of the Drop Pod love sports. Eat the other, the other half, the other half just sits and just, just plays the video games. Uh, now, if you want to, if you want to talk sports, we can talk sumo wrestling. Well, but I haven't watched that. I was going to bring this up. The <laughs> Conor McGregor fight has come and gone. Uh, this is this is serious stuff, by the way. The Conor McGregor the, fight has come and the gone. The UFC? Yes, the UFC. UFC thing? Uh, okay. Last week was the the first thing that we've gotten on like pay-per-view, but it was all streamed. And I think that this game was really important because this is going to really set a precedent. Like, is, it, is this the best that UFC has done in terms of their monetization of the sport? It's like we, we've never crossed this, this line where it was like, okay, we're watching this, but we're not in attendance for it. A lot of our viewers, they're at home. It's no different from pay-per-view, really, but this is streaming. So a lot more people have access to this. Mm. It's it's just kind of interesting. Conor McGregor went into this fight thinking he, he was fucking Billy Batson and got his ass clapped. Uh, <laughs> Billy Batson. Billy Batson, round two, two minutes and 32 seconds into the fight. Dustin Poirier, he had clapped this dude. And a lot of memes started coming out of that. And I thought, wow, I, I, I love McGregor. My dad really likes McGregor. He's a huge fan of the guy because he just talks a whole lot of shit. And he just thinks that's funny now, as a fighter. Now, is that like uh, John Badman? John Badman? Billy Badson? No. Billy Badson? No, uh, Billy ba No, definitely. No, Billy Bad is, uh, is like a term that you use when you're just like Joe Schmo, but you're like, you're Joe Schmo of like fighting. You're you're Billy Bad. You're just like you you can fight, but in this instance, oh, he did not fight. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was Joe Glass. No, um, <laughs> it it's it's just interesting how this is a fighter that goes into every fight. He goes into every fight just like really raw. He looked like super ready for this one. He gets in there. He didn't. He didn't really know what a hook was. It looked like it was just he got rocked. So it's going to be interesting to see in the coming weeks what he wants to do. I, I heard so many things that this guy had retired. Now he's back. He's doing this. He's doing that. Stick to one thing. Let's we'll see where it goes. Uh, one of the most famous fighters we have had in the UFC for like ages since the, the time of uh, Chuck the Iceman Liddell and... Uh, we had Kimbo Slice. It was like a... He, he had a stint. But uh, interesting stuff. Let me know what you guys thought of the fight. Let me know what you guys think about... Uh, uh, the matter of, of streaming these fights. 
because I, I think that this is going to set a precedent for how we do sports. I mean, people didn't think esports were going to be really a thing. And I mean, look where we are. I mean, they, they, the whole point of like the internet as we know it right now is just everybody's using it as a crutch in their life. Like people need it. So it's, uh, it's cool to see how our kind of reality is getting pushed to more, I wouldn't say practical application, but application outside of just like posting funny pictures and playing video games like this is people bring it into their world so it's kind of interesting to me he i think the guy i don't know anybody they should have done the capoeira and they would have won immediately is what it looks like that's about all i know should have done the capoeira you know how hard that is to do I don't know. Looks pretty easy. Then you do it. You you do it right now. Okay. I will put that as an overlay on this podcast right now so that the people that are actually watching this shit can watch it, can see that, what you did there. You do it right now. Okay. I know you have enough room for it. Do it. Okay, Okay. here we go. Are you ready? No, no. You, you turn on the camera. God damn it. Okay, We're on okay Discord. here we go. Nope. All right, okay. <laughs> nope, we're not doing this. You, you okay, guys can't see this right now, but he doesn't actually have the camera up. It's it's No, it's definitely no, he's lying. It's definitely on. Okay, you ready? Here here it goes. Here it goes. He didn't want to show me. <sighs> Soon. I did it. Soon. I did it. The truth will be revealed in time when there is no overlay for the video portion of this podcast because he didn't do it. You can't prove that. I, I can't prove it. I don't have any... I don't have the video. Well, if you didn't see it, looks like you don't know. And now you know. <sighs> Very well who you are. Don't let that hold you down. You ready to talk about a little bit of some stuff here? Some some news stuff? Yes, let's go back on script. You got a little crazy out there. Can you... Are you on page five? No, I'm on a Eurogamer. Oh, he's... Oh, he's not on script. Oh, no... Oh, this is personal personal news. Huh. This isn't the thing we were talking about earlier with GameStop. This is personal news. And then we can get into that. Because there's been an update I was just informed of from uh, Michael about uh, uh, 40 minutes ago. Go on, then. Oh. So, have you heard anything about uh, Fallout the Frontier? Yeah, plenty. What'd you hear? I uh, I'm waiting for it to release in a in a better state uh, before I get into it. I was going to download it the moment it had came out. I decided against that because uh, mm. it, it the, there were just too many bugs plaguing it. Um, mm. uh. But I've heard the recent recent news. I don't know if you want to go into that. But if you are, mm. then tread tread lightly, friend. Tread, so, tread carefully. Uh, if you're not aware or had forgotten, uh, I worked on this. I voiced in the frontier as a couple of NPCs. Who'd you voice? So that, uh. I can't. I don't remember specifically. One I know I voiced Tuner, and then the other one I think I voiced, but I honestly can't remember because that it, it was a while ago that I did lines. Um, I think it was Way. W E I. I think. But at the very least, I did a hundred percent. That was the uh, last thing I had voiced was a uh, a guy named Tuner. Uh so let me tell you, it is the weirdest feeling 
being attached to Fallout the Frontier, uh, a project that's been, uh, I think it was seven years in the works, only for uh, the main artist to on, on the project to uh, ruin the reputation of it, aside from bugs and some of the really weird things with the mod, which I'll get into, but the artist on the project uh, posts some uh, pedophilic drawings on his personal uh, account to then which he was promptly removed from the team and uh, the mod on the Nexus is now hidden and the Steam release date is it continues to be unknown when that'll happen uh, and then also in addition uh TG Spy, I don't know how his name is actually said, but TG Spy, uh, who I've done work with in the past on one of his mods uh, before he joined up with the Frontier. He said that the Frontier project was uh, nothing but stress. So he's done. So yeah, it's uh not going great. Um and and that's even regardless of some of the things within the mod that are very odd and kind of concerning. So uh there is a part in the frontier in which uh I guess if you're playing the legion part of the mod, which the Legion are people who are trying to pretend to be Romans, and so, like, they're all about slaves and whatnot, and they're essentially the bad guys for Fallout New Vegas. Well, I guess there's a portion in that campaign that, uh, you enslave this younger girl, and she is all like, master this, master that, And it's really weird. And it's like, why is this here? Uh, and then apparently at some uh, at some point in the mod, uh, a Deathclaw has sex with you. Or you can, at least. Uh, on January 27th, uh, they have completely cut ties with that uh that individual that was responsible for yeah the artist for i i don't want to call it out i don't want to i don't want to put this on blast of course i do fuck you fuck you you know what you did you feet loving perv pedophile 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 fuck you pedophile um they cut him out they are, in fact, attempting to remove the, the the stuff that he had worked on. So, I mean, there it's it's up in the air. I read on. Uh, I I read on uh, the development by Eurogamer that they are still trying to go with the with the Steam launch. I I don't know how that's going in two fucking days i hope that just didn't get scrapped completely but i was i was looking forward to this one as i mean new vegas yeah, is e e everybody was there, there's some impressive things that the mod does and that shouldn't be discredited i i but it's i feel definitely like that's important tarnished that you and said hype kind of ruined it i i feel like well. that was an important thing that you said though is that it shouldn't be tarnished just because of this one this one thing it's not the fault of the entire fucking team you put the blame at the feet where it belongs this fucking guy um it, it, it was an incredible like Mala said earlier an incredible incredible length of time to work on something just to have it fucked by this one person and they're terrible, 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 terrible overshadowed 
fetish. It's awful. So I mean, the mod it, the mod itself has some uh, quality issues. It, uh, it does. It does in regards to like voice actors, and then like it's kind of. It's written kind of bad in a lot of spots, but uh, there are some characters that are genuinely written well from uh, what I've seen myself. And that's why uh, I wasn't going to play this initially because I, I wanted them to iron this shit out. I wasn't going to be... In fact, yeah. like the launch of it, like it, it broke Nexus for a few days. It was crazy. Like this thing, mm -hmm. this thing oh, went no, yeah. up. I'm, it's a mod, so I give it a few passes. It, it badly written here, badly written there, whatever. But the yeah. the thing is, is that I just feel like we have to remember that the, at the end of the day, this was an incredible work of over over you know five years, seven years. It's crazy. Yeah. Don't just you know base your opinion on this game like, oh, I was gonna play it, but this. Please place the blame at the person it belongs to. It's it is that simple play it Absolutely. when it's good yeah fuck that person fuck their fetish it is awful i hope i hope more happens than just that we're cutting ties with this because now we kind of have to look into this a little bit hmm. there could be any number of things that this fucking person was doing but that's all i just I, I I hate I, I hate seeing a, a project like this just go up in smoke just because of you know the faults of one. That's awful. Yeah, I just uh, I'm put into an awkward position where again I'm somebody that helped work on the project as you know uh, fairly minor you know voice roles, but still it's like my name is on the project, so it's just it's weird being tied to something that's getting so much backlash right now I suppose and I, I kind of don't know how to feel like of course the mod shouldn't be shat on for you know some of the things it did great but yeah it's being overshadowed right now by uh, a pedophile oh excuse me the, the... It, it's hard to say because I've never I've never been in a situation like this but i would say just it it's important to understand like this is this individual it's not like the entirety of that of that outfit was like oh yeah man you you go you do it no this is mm -hmm. one person you gotta say all right well fuck this guy the rest of this it, it should it should stay afloat but this right here this needs to go and we'll we'll rebuild it but that's all i can really say because i again i'm not in such a position i haven't been yeah but that's that's crazy it went from biggest mod we've seen in, in quite a time to well would you look at that you know about this fucker you know about that well now you know yup <laughs> it saddens me really but yeah like like, uh, like I said I, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel right now <laughs> so it's it's awkward so I mean there's that the other thing is of course uh, game stop stonks uh, and I will try to tell this as uh, poorly as I can understand it, as I've been told. Hello, everyone. In post, we have decided that we would bring in uh, a member of the Hell Jumpers to explain how this works. And if we were going to talk about this, I wanted to at least make sure that we came correct. Uh, so as a first for Drop Pod, we are just going to have somebody drop in for a little bit talk about GameStop and that's that. Let me know what you guys think about this whole thing in the comments. I will not make a habit of this, but this is what we wanted to do right now just so that we made sure the topics and that therein were discussed properly. Okay, uh, we brought 
we from the hell jumpers server to actually explain this to us because otherwise we would have i'm assuming we would have stumbled over some stuff and i just feel like a hundred percent diligence <laughs> uh welcome welcome Michael. hello hi hello uh i'm no fucking stock expert here am i allowed to say the f word yeah okay cool <laughs> didn't know didn't know your rules for this but don't worry i, I fuck a lot <laughs> Cool. Uh, I'm no expert in this whole thing. I'm kind of new to it, but I think I've looked into it more than these two, too. Uh, well, your, well, your father, at least, uh, does stock stuff. Yeah, so I'm a little bit more familiar. I have family who does whatever. But I'm still going to hell up, like, super simplify it, put it in layman's terms, just whatever. Okay, so basically, uh, to explain what's happening, a bunch of hedge funds on Wall Street are shorting GameStop's stock. Which, if you don't know what shorting means, it's a Wall Street term for basically betting against it. Um, when you take a short position, you buy a stock at a higher price with the intention to replace it at a later time. So you buy it for more than it's worth for the intention that you will pay, you will replace it with interest the obvious goal is that you will not pay enough interest or money on that stock um to outdo the profit that you will make for instance if they buy gamestop stock at 20 dollars a piece pay an interest on it and then it goes down like they predict it will they make like it goes down to four like it was five a couple weeks ago um goes down to four that's a 16 dollar profit on every share that they have which is a share is just you know you buy one share of a company you you are technically now a shareholder if you know what that means but it doesn't matter um and that's a lot of money it's said that these people put in like 60 million shares that's a shit ton of money and that's what these hedge funds do all the time right it is in their benefit for a company like GameStop to crash. And they would have been successful if it did. Basically, the the what Reddit is doing, what Wall Street Bets is doing, what people are doing, is fighting the short with a squeeze. Basically, if you buy the stock and artificially base artificially, to be fair artificially raise its value by continuously buying it at higher and higher values their short go well is wrong they, they lost the bet you know they bet that it would go under it just keeps on going up every morning the stock market opens at 9 a.m that shit rockets up at least 50 percent it's and it's going up and up every day i think it's at but this weekend, I think it's at like 323. And just a few days ago, it closed at 193. It's 325 right now per share. So the, the goal of the average Joe here versus Wall Street is to hold on to those shares and not sell them at all until. Citadel, Melvin, those uh, hedge funds basically pay so much money in, in interest on the stocks that they owe that they are forced to buy back stocks. Now, because now the reason that GameStop is unique because hedge funds take short positions on companies all the time. For instance, you may have heard AMC's big deal right now. Uh, They've been shorted 60%, which means that a hedge fund or multiple has shorted 60% of their stock, which means that if people squeezed it, they wouldn't completely be necessary to buy everything back. But GameStop was originally shorted for 180%, which means that they technically owned 180%. Of GameStop's stock. Meaning. 
that no matter what, unless they pay off all their shorts, what they've been trying to do, they are forced to, because they own more than there actually is, they are forced to buy back stock from the people who own it, who actually own the physical copy, because they, you know, they borrowed it, so they don't technically own it. So they have to buy it from everybody who actually physically owns a share at whatever the market value is. So the goal of Reddit during the squeeze will happen sometimes next week, probably. The value will go up to like, people say $1,000. That's a maybe in my book, personally. I but it, it pe people some say ten thousand. I doubt it. Um, that's per share. Per share, yes. Per share, I doubt it that it would go to ten thousand. But the goal is basically to absolutely steal every dollar from these hedge funds, make them pay. Some some of it is vindictive. Um, some of it's just for personal gain. Like, who cares who wins or loses? Um, that's practically it. Uh, the, sh the squeeze is the term for when all of a sudden, basically, these hedge funds are going to try to quietly, because they already have, uh, pay off their short position until they don't own 100%. And right now it's down to like 120, I think, 130. So they're slowly paying off with the more than 100% they own mm. by going 20 billion in the hole. They've got multiple hedge funds have gone bankrupt from it. It's <laughs> to some it's great. Uh, I'm not going to say what I think, but uh, I think it's pretty. No, no, fuck it. I think it's hilarious. Um, I mean, you're fucking uh, over billionaires. Yeah, it's it's funny, but <laughs> just to continue with the explanation. So basically, it's, uh, it seems to be as soon as they pay off their short, it's time to go, and practically all of a sudden the price will just drop. The squeeze will happen in a single day, and if you're not ready for it, you will lose a lot of money. But if you're there for it, then you can make a lot of money. Um, there's some other stuff to get into. Uh, for instance, for a couple days this last week, some brokers, if you don't know what a broker is, a broker is a third-party person who you buy shares through and they fulfill your trades on the New York Stock Exchange floor for you. So you don't actually have to be there in person. They are they are just the middleman. You do it through. Like Robin Hood, Fidelity, these people. Um, some of these companies close down trading for entire days, limits, uh, limitations on who can buy and if you can buy it all, um, for instance, I think I think selling on Robinhood just opened back up on Friday after they had closed it down, but left open selling. And there's a big controversy over that because Citadel, one of the um, hedge funds that shorted GameStop for a lot of money, has a pretty big stake in them. So there's, you know conflict of interest on that why would you help them you know this is the first time you've ever really done this it seems that you help the uh you're just helping the big guy when he gets hurt there is another reason that i actually looked into um that may have some credence to it i think there is a little bit of suspicious activity going on but um, there is reason to believe that there is actually so much trading going on with GameStop and like just in so much high volumes that uh, Robinhood had to take like a one billion dollar loan. There, there is reason to believe that they actually just didn't have enough money to fulfill the trades for the people who were buying GameStop <laughs> stock. There's, a, there's, there's, yes, and that's a credence to how high volume this stock is getting traded. Is there's reason to believe that Robinhood literally did not have enough money for multiple days 
to let people trade. So that's one thing. Whether you believe there's also some fuckery going on is up to you, but that seems to have some credence to it, which is funny in its own way. Um, they've opened back up as recently, but actually limited uh, users to only buying one share. So there just seems to be a lot of um, fuckery going about. The White House is looking into it. Yeah, um, the, the, the White House is looking into GameStop. Was the White the House is looking into GameStop. <laughs> um, the U.S. Treasury, uh, head of the Treasury, was given 800K, I think, by Melvin, um, for give, to give a speech. And so that's a big conflict of interest. Uh, yeah, the, the head of the Secretary, or sorry, the Secretary of the Treasury was given $800,000 recently from one of the hedge funds shorting GameStop. So that's bad. <laughs> um, not surprising at all. But I feel like I covered most of the bases to the best of my knowledge. And even if I'm wrong in a few spots, you just kind of get it. What's going on? It's been a very interesting week. Yeah, um, suffice to say. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know what you think about politics, but I'm not going to get into anything in particular. But I really, I just think it's really funny that this was such a big story right after the inauguration of the new incumbent um, president. That like <laughs> news of the former completely dropped off the face of the earth in place of GameStop and Reddit, right. <laughs> and I think that's hilarious. That that was such a big story for months. For years, even just mm -hmm. that man's, just that man's name, and all of a sudden, I haven't heard anything about him for the past week and a half. It's right. been completely dominated by the stock market fiasco. I yeah. think that's really interesting. The war on Wall Street. I really think that it shows a lot of um, what the media is really interested in. Is like oh. <laughs> The, this shit happens and everybody drops everything. Oh no, absolutely on both on both sides. Yeah, because like even uh now you have uh my uh grandfather is an accountant and uh I had mentioned to my dad, hey, do you want to make some easy money? Uh because I told him to look into uh GME stock. Uh and he was hanging out with my grandfather at the time. And he had said that the squeeze already happened and there's not much left to gain from it because not all true. he's hearing. Well, yeah, because all he's hearing from is from the TV and on TV and on the news, they're saying that, oh, you know, there's nothing really to get at now. Meanwhile, you have hedge funders and billionaires literally crying on the air saying it's not fair. This isn't right. But while they originally were saying that, oh, th but the poor should just invest. It's very funny. <laughs> Here's um, the article for the Treasury Secretary, or at least a picture of it. I can actually find the real article, but hold on. Treasury Secretary Yellen received over 800K in speaking fees from hedge fund involved in GameStop controversy. Um, that's Reddit's plan. <laughs> uh it's it seems to be going well from all the sh uh from all the shit that I've seen. Yeah. The short has not or the squeeze has not happened yet. The squeeze has not been squeezed. The squeeze has not been squeezed. There was a lot of fuckery especially earlier this week with uh earlier this week as of the 30th of January Saturday when these are these guys record this i'm uh absolutely doxing that fact for consistency's sake on my knowledge of the situation mm. <laughs> just so somebody can't be like what happened tomorrow I'll be like, yeah <laughs> like, and then everybody <laughs> died <laughs> yeah well thanks you doing you? for uh coming out man i appreciate you uh, yeah dropping in and drop pad and thank you, Michael. Uh, no problem. Okay, so that was Michael. 
some interesting stuff. Uh, I was trying to tell Mel that you know the stuff in the stock market has been going on for like so long, where it's like you're you're hoping that a company will just kind of like collapse, and you're just waiting on it, so that way you can just go in deep. And it's interesting when you have so many people fighting against it like this. It's it's crazy. So I think um, a lot of people are talking about like how is this going going to change? You know, trading going forward. Uh, it's not like how it was in the days of, you know, 2000. It's just we have the internet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can rally people so fucking easy. It's like I've never looked into stocks, and uh, after we're done, I'm probably going to set my stuff up and uh, go ahead and get my uh, share prepared for, well, share prepared buying for uh, Monday, hopefully. If it's uh, low enough, because I guess I can only buy one share. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be an interesting, interesting little thing. <laughs> I hope it pays out to ten thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, your boy is living like a king for the next, for the for the year, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's an instant upgrade to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> um. So me and uh, Mala are, are you... have been talking about, uh, and this this comes from a from a place of deep regret. And I'm sorry. Wait, wait what am I re what am I regretting? I'm sorry to you, dear viewer, that um, this will be <laughs> the last episode of Drop Pod. Um, Mela and I have been painstakingly recording these episodes and. We felt like we're too large now and <laughs> just Yeah, we, we need to move on to T V is what exactly, he's gonna imply. Exactly, exactly. He wouldn't let me finish it. He just it, it's hard to see your baby. Just go, rip the band aid off. Just rip the band aid off. Um, rip it off, throw some salt on it. We have we've gotten bought out by um it it's not a a well-known channel by any means it's not we're not prime time or anything it's a podcast um, we will be on pbs station uh starting mm -hmm. march mm -hmm. thank you that was all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. full disclosure this was a bit i don't know why i do these offhand things just to really piss mel off at the end of the day but oh the a... day already ended it's 1 a.m you're free to hush. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Who's that character? No, that's me. Oh, that's Mel's laugh, everybody. <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. I I just do that to really rustle your jimmies, rustle your feathers a little bit. I'm fine. Because then I'm going to hear about it next week. You know, I didn't like when you when you talk exactly. can you just can you stop talking <laughs> <laughs> like can i you came just on mute your track <laughs> like, like, i came on here to help you bring back your podcast because you told you asked me a couple times if i wanted to it like i just i'm feeling so disrespected right now and like if you can just shut the fuck up for the entire podcast that'd be great so i can just talk i just want somebody to listen to me man Eh? I felt like episode ten because it's coming up faster than we than both of us think. I thought Are we on a uh, six, six, six. Yes. Yep. The sixth drop. The sixth drop. Where are we dropping to? Dusty did online. It. <laughs> online. I was making a Fortnite reference, but you did online. Yeah, it could be a spot. The online store. That's We're dropping Tilted Towers. You drop anywhere else, you're bad. I'm dropping Tomato Land. I don't know the official name, but there's a tomato. I remember dropping there. Where are you dropping? Let us know in the comments. Did you veer <laughs> off? Did you veer off the course of the drop? Are you? Did you buy stonks? Let us know. 
let us know. Are you uh, are you buying a stonk share? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I'm going deep. Um. There's a hell jumper. I'm not going to put him on blast. Sorry, Mel. I'm not going to uh, put uh, okay, him on blast. Okay, you're, you're going to talk about him. I was just about to mention him. <laughs> There's a hell jumper in our server who is going deep. <laughs> I will not drop his name. Just I, I don't know how how private he is with this information, but he is going so deep that he has sunk ten thousand bones into this. I Jesus. thought that was just an additional. It's an additional, yes. He's gonna. I don't drop know what that. his original one was. And the way that he said it, it was like a small loan of a million dollars to him. It was it was crazy. It's like yeah, this is my this is my winner <laughs> bonus. So it's like whatever. I'm gonna make that back in like a few months. You know what I mean? I'm like holy shit. Dude. Literally in a week. <laughs> Literally in a week. It's it's wild. Like going deep. Can can you imagine though? Because the initial uh, shares for GameStop were dirt cheap at five dollars. Can you imagine? Oh, bro, being the be front runner for that, making out like, like a thief in the night right now. You wouldn't hear like, about it. I wouldn't tell you nothing. One of the uh, one of the first like forerunners for this uh, is at negative fifteen million dollars. Oh yeah, and the goal here is for everybody to you know hold their shares. Until, as Michael was saying, they have to uh, buy out next week. And that's when, you know, you sell. So just, like, everybody's, like, hold until this happens. Until you bleed the billionaires dry, the hedge funders. Oh, yeah, bleed them for everything. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, just seeing fucking billionaires crying on air on tv about it's not fair and this isn't right it, it's pathetic i i now absolutely understand the term devour the one percent i want to fucking eat their hearts <laughs> and plus if i can say that i had a hand uh in the future, hopefully, when this happens, that I had a hand in destroying the shitty company that was GameStop, then that's a life goal achievement for me. <laughs> Something fuck GameStop. that I have to say, though, in to play devil's advocate, is that the smartest thing that they're doing is acting like this is just everyday business. That is exactly how you should do this. Uh, do they not who? comment GameStop yeah no you have not heard anything from them period. they are and acting it's like... like this is everyday business <laughs> they're posting tweets it is a good thing that is good you don't if you are ever in this situation dear viewer if I if for whatever reason one of you is like holding out and you're just like a, a business mogul who owns like 94 yachts out in the Pacific you do not mention that you're getting squozed. <laughs> you don't mention how you're going under. <laughs> exactly. You just act like it's everyday business. That is all you have to do, and that is it. You're no, doing... the squoze the already happened. It's done and settled. Uh, th this is an article when I was initially being like, should I get into this maybe? I was reading off of uh, Bloomberg, and it's like, no. Everybody was like, no, this is bullshit. They're fucking lying. <laughs> and, uh, well, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of scare tactics going on. Uh, we saw that that huge dip where it was like, oh, they're selling. We got to do it. We got to go. And it's like, no, you hold. Ain't nothing happening. They're trying to they're trying to scare you into selling right now. And you don't want to <laughs> do that. That's very, very dangerous. So we can just, all make find... out like millionaires right now. Yeah. I just find it so pitiful that they're calling it the war on Wall Street. It's just that we haven't seen anything of this magnitude in no. ages. It's it's crazy. <laughs> this is literally, and I I really like that that uh, tweet. It was, uh, you know, this is for the kids from 2008 who are all grown up now, who are ready to to really dick down on you guys for the whole shit that happened in 2008. And everybody, one of every single one of you, you were all right. 
However, a lot of us weren't. This is your comeuppance, my dudes. This is strategic deployment of my funds into GameStop, my dude. Anarchy, dude. Let's go. <laughs> I'd like to uh, bring back to a quote, which I believe is from the uh, old MTV show, Wonder Chosen. It was a comedy uh, show that was like parodying uh, violent kid shows. Or trying to be a violent kid show, but it was like, whatever. But uh, the quote is, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Today, we're learning about Wall Street. When the revolution comes, where will you hide? And it's like, we it couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> I can't wait to devour the 1%. I'm excited. Will they no longer Let be the 1%? <laughs> Everybody else will be the 1% and then we'll devour them. <laughs> <laughs> Self-cannibalize the internet. <laughs> it's a battle royale at this point. Last Man Standing is now the 1%. Wonder <sighs> Shows was pretty good, I thought. I never really saw it. A lot of it uh, was, uh, it was a lot, a lot of satirical nonsense. It just, it was like, if you like South Park, but South Park got too dark, or, uh, sorry, not dark, Darth, which is a different, uh, term. Well, they used, uh, they used actual puppets, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a lost art nowadays. Yeah, puppeteering is not, so, I mean, we were talking about it last week. It was like, when was the last time you've seen, like, a yeah. Something in good animation form. Like I miss claymation. I miss uh mm -hmm. what was it? Action Action League on Nickelodeon that was using uh like actual action yeah, Action League now. They were using action figures and it was like stop motion on the action figures and it was like it was a pretty whatever show, but it was that was animation that I kinda liked. Like we don't have stop motion anymore. We had Coraline. Coraline was great. Yeah, I uh, see. I've never, I've never seen uh, Action League now. Oh, I loved Action League. Now it only lasted uh, like early two thousands, and then it was just that was it. Hmm. But uh, that was the show. Um. Yeah, if I can't I can add in. Good. If I can add in one more quote about the whole Wall Street thing, I'd like to say, "Fear not, the stonks, my friend." And let the feast begin. Boo. You gonna boo the 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 locust? The preacher locust? Fear not the stonks, my friend. And let the feast begin. What are we doing? What are you doing? Mm, I think after the podcast, I'm going to go have a nice meal. Unwind. I'm going to play video game and have something to chat about on next week's show, show when I play video game. Well, yeah. What are you going to do after the show? Uh, More Jack Daniels and... Uh... Bloodborne, more Bloodborne. I need more eyes on the inside, my friend. How come you don't play the forest with me? We could craft like a little camp. We can push the Minecraft beds together, you know? Can, uh... Because it's $20 right now. Oh. You're telling me you don't own the critically acclaimed forest, the overwhelmingly positive forest on Steam out now, out of early access for $20? You're telling me that you do own Forest? I was playing it. I might play more of it off stream. Where no, you definitely knows. weren't playing Forest. If you're if you're talking about the Forest, oh, then that's a different story altogether. <laughs> I'm I'm playing the field of every minute detail. 
I got your number. It's not DP. It's Dr. Pepper, you fucking idiot. Who the fuck calls it DP? You know, Mr. Mealy. <laughs> melee! Melee! Mealy! They were all in a melee. I mean, that's just a very... It might be like a very broadcaster type thing to do. Literally like, just look up... Literally just look up the word. It's melee. Like, um, H, and then you have H, because broadcasters needed to distinctly call out, you know, that, that, that H. But we yep, don't do that's, that. Yeah, that's why, you know, we got, we have Z, and that's Z. Well, I think that's just a, a British way of doing it, though. I don't, don't think that's more or less. Don't you dare forget the ampersand, which isn't part of the alphabet. I don't know why they said it was part of the alphabet at one time. Do you pronounce it H or do you pronounce it H? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Will you devour the one percenters? Let us know in the comments below. Who are you going to cannibalize this week? Let us know what you think of <laughs> Michael in the comments below. <laughs> to come back and it's just gonna be like kick that agents fellow out <laughs> this Michael guy in, dude. <laughs> new podcast drop pods dead now drop it's pods dead. Remember, now it's Mala and the bicycle remember that uh that agents fellow that little podcast he had dude I would be a guest bicycle. on your guys' <laughs> wheels and the bicycle <laughs> No, Mala and the bicycle. Bicycle being uh, Bicycle. Michael. We. That's all I really got. Hey, where can they find you? They don't. Where can they find you? Well, you plugged me earlier, but uh, you can find me if you didn't hear that earlier. That doesn't at the fucking of the matter podcast. if I plugged you hey. earlier. You can't do that. <laughs> it's, it's the closing. <laughs> Go ahead, go on. Hey, hey, yo, hey, <laughs> go ahead, sweetie, go on. <laughs> Use your words, come on. Uh, you can find me at <laughs> the Balustrobe, and Balustrobe on Twitch and Twitter. I'm gonna be doing some editing. I got, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Very uh, good, uh, sweetie. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Where the hell could they find you if they wanted to find you? I was going to say, but then you decided to rip me. I was going to say there's going to be some adjustments <laughs> Where? to my Where? Twitter. No, hold on. You cannot. There's going to be adjustments to my Twitter in the coming days, but you can find me at uh, Twitter forward slash Aegis CXVII. I'm there. Uh, you and find me on Twitter Ghoul. It is what it is, you know how it you know how it be. Uh Aegis C X V I I dot live. Uh, my domain is still up, so it helps me if you guys check that out, especially if I'm streaming. I have that bookmark. You can also find some sick merch. I'm gonna have some drop pod tees very soon. I'm actually gonna order one. I was gonna give away this will be good if you guys actually make it to this close right here. I was going to give away uh, a Hell Jumper shirt, not a Drop Pod shirt, but a Hell Jumper shirt on stream. I was going to do another giveaway after the Snakey Snake plushie that uh, Magnetic Zero, one of the Hell Jumpers in the server, had one. So I'm going to do another giveaway. It's going to be a cool Hell Jumpy T. Get you one for free on me. Uh, that's when I stream on Twitch forward slash Aegis underscore CXVII. We'll be streaming a lot of horror stuff this week. Um, this is also the week where we check out the crossover event from Resident Evil to Division. 
That's going to be fun. Uh, Mel and I might do something. I haven't really talked to him. You know, I don't really get to talk to him like I normally do. We used to be like <laughs> homies back in the day, but I don't know. He just oh, which day in twenty in twenty seventeen in twenty seventeen. Yeah, we used to be boys. We used to be on the grind on Dota. You have no idea. Yep, I used man, to play Dota oh, all yeah. the oh, time. You couldn't get this man off it. I remember, man. I remember his folks had to call me. And he was like, man, this guy's still playing this game. And I'm like, oh, thanks for telling me, uh, Mr. Malastrum. I'm going to get on my computer now and play Dota with Malastrum. Mm -hmm. Malastrum 15 at the time. Yes, yes as he was uh, more properly known. <laughs> but now he doesn't... He uses me for content. Yep. No, not at all. Thank you, yeah, if you for... If, uh, if... <laughs> go ahead. My thank you doesn't matter. Fine. I was just going to say, you check my Steam. Yeah, Dota 2 is the most hours on record for what I've played. Uh, anyway, your fuck ass, thank you. Yee ass haircut. The problem is. <laughs> oh my god, the problem is. My hair can grow out to that. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> right now, my. Right now, my. Haircut. Right now, my hair is a yee ass haircut. <laughs> But you just got your hair cut like a month ago. I'm I'm going it out currently, and I'm I'm sticking to it this time. I was I was too weak, and I I just decided to to do a a temple shape. But I'm I'm gonna grow it out this time, so the hat might return. In fact, the hat will return because it's not gonna look professional after a while. And you guys are gonna be like, "Hey, that don't look right." And I'm gonna be yeah, like, you, "Told you." You just gotta get through that uh, uncomfortable phase. It's like the same for facial hair. It's like there's that point in when in, in which it you know it itches or it just it doesn't look right. You gotta let that grow out, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you, and that's what I'm gonna do. I need to be strong willed about this. I need to let it happen. Just let it grow, you know? Yeah, grow out your ball hair. Oh yeah. Manscaped, more like Don't. land mass. <laughs> rhymes with ass which is what it'll be if you manscape oh yeah manscape sponsor us though we love you moi smooches I, I could take an Adam and Eve sponsor oh hell yeah oh hell yeah I <laughs> can get you one it's a dildo <laughs> dude get you a dildo <laughs> viewer if you would like a dildo or a super special secret surprise gift on over to Adam and Eve. Tell us, or it's, don't tell. Sorry, <laughs> tell them where you where you heard <laughs> where you heard this. Tell them that you're dropping in. <laughs> Post in the comments if you'd <laughs> buy some Drop Pod <laughs> brand dildos. <laughs> oh man, that would be amazing if we had our own. <laughs> drop our, pod own dildo. <laughs> our own dildo. Our own dildo. Say it literally shaped as a drop pod <laughs> there have been weirder shapes but they got dragon ones yeah but it's a fucking drop pod though dude it's it's got like flames coming out the back of it like actual flames dude get get me get me a, a grammy and then it's just a dildo Ooh. <laughs> I don't sound comfortable at all <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody you know where to find us yep. i don't have anything to add on that you know where to find us though <laughs> you know where to find us <laughs> i'm gonna say this publicly since this is the close malo and i still haven't done the re playthrough yet no balls in his court goodbye now everybody <laughs> Goodbye.